that's mine. All right, welcome to the Chuck Shoot Podcast. This is exciting. I have a live guest here today of the very famous uh, Craig Gass. He's uh, got my notes here, sorry. <laughs> Stuttering all over. I my guest is a hilarious comedian, actor. Used to work on the Howard Stern Show. He's appeared on King of Queens, Family Guy, Sex in the City, so much more. He's open, also open for two of my favorite bands, Motley Crue and Metallica. Yes. And he's a diehard Seahawks fan, so please welcome Craig Gass. Yay. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank Listen you so to that much for being here. Crazy round of applause. Yeah. Oh, my God. Right? Oh, my God. Yeah. That's, I'm absolutely. excited to be here. And, yes, I do love the Seahawks. I book... Uh, a lot of my shows around the United States. No, yeah. Around Seahawks road games. You so. basically live my dream life. You book, you book all your uh, shows around Seahawks games, concerts, and Mar well, Mariners games. Except for the Mariner thing. I'm not a big Mariner guy. Listen, but, it's not uh, easy being a Mariners fan. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it's all they've given me is hemorrhoids, but it's, um, <laughs> but I, I do, I am loyal, but uh, yeah. the Mariners, God, they, they've not only killed my love of the Mariners, they've killed my love of baseball. But I still go, I mean, I've enjoyed getting the chance of seeing the Mariners play in every stadium around the country, and um, uh, it's a big reason why I'm not famous, but I'm, <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun because yeah. I get to no, see You live my books. dream life, like yeah. I said. Yeah, so it's very my, cool. My schedule's going to slow down a little bit soon yeah. so that I can uh, focus on stuff that actually feeds your career, but... Um, but I have had a lot of fun just traveling around and just enjoying life. Yeah, very cool. So starting back at the beginning, I know you've probably told the story a million times, but it's very interesting because your whole family was deaf. You, both your parents, your sister, mm -hmm. um, your mom and sister were, it was, you know, obviously by, um, by birth, but your dad had an accident. So I just wondering though, one question I never heard anyone ask you was, did you ever get teased or bullied because your family was deaf? Did they oh yeah, a lot. Really? Yeah, I got, uh, you would occasionally hear people making fun of my family, you know, thinking that everyone in that group was deaf. So they would like be assholes thinking that no one in that group could hear, but I right. could hear it, you know? So uh. it was, uh, but I also got a thick skin and also learned that you can laugh at, uh, that laughter is healing and the most insensitive and the most outrageous deaf jokes I've ever heard were from my own deaf family. They would, they right. would tell jokes that were just so fucked up. I love the one your sister told. Yeah, my sister <laughs> last year, I threw her a surprise birthday party and you could argue that anything for deaf people is a surprise, but I threw a surprise <laughs> birthday party for my sister and at dinner, my sister is signing to me um, in sign language and she said she waved and said do you want to hear a good joke? And I said, sure. And then she said, me too. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Holy shit. That and was so uh, great. Yeah, that yeah. joke was amazing. Do you use so that in your stand up? Or? I do. I do okay. now. Okay. And I tell her about it. I go, man, your joke kills. And she goes, oh, that old hack deaf joke. And I'm like, what? And she's like, oh, all deaf people have been doing that for decades. And I'm uh, like, wow, I've never heard that joke that before classic, until, yeah. until she told it to me. But so, yeah. And then you used to work in the music business kind of as a kid. And that's how you made a lot of these connections. Yes. And you started doing the impressions at a young age. So is there any that were you doing a lot of the same ones that you do now? Or is there any that you did back then that you've kind of retired? What I did as a kid uh, growing up in Arizona, I'd go to keg parties in the desert. And I always had this knack for doing voices because growing up in a deaf family, I learned how to talk by copying all the voices I heard on TV. I right. couldn't learn how to talk for my family. Exactly. Yeah. I learned how to talk by copying all the voices I heard on TV. Going to keg parties here in the desert, people would go, Craig, if we give you some Coke, will you do some impressions for us? And I'd be like, fuck yeah. And... <laughs> I got really good at impressions, yeah. but I also developed a really bad coke habit, right. and I had to figure out how to get away from that, and that, that took a long time, but, sure. um, but I remember early on, it was like, whatever was going on as a teenager, which was like cheers, oh, you know, okay. I, I would do like Cliff Clavin, like, eh, you know that... Uh, in the early 1400s, they used to have uh, <laughs> cocaine parties in the desert. Yeah, sure. You know? And then after a couple uh, lines, we're like, yeah, and then uh, cocaine is a <laughs> kind of a stimulating drug that'll lead to your death. Yeah, check that out. You know, and it just kind of speeded up, oh. and all my impressions got really bad. Nobody seemed to notice because everybody else was on coke. Right, okay. But, uh, Makes sense. but yeah, that's, that's kind of where it started. And it's crazy because you start doing impressions for your friends, and it's just for fun. 
And then you start doing stand up and you learn really early on, well, if you're dirty, you're not going to work. Right. No one's going to book you if you're dirty. So it's like, all right, well, I'll do it for the love of it. And you just work on it and work on it and work on it for fun. And then you get it and just an opportunity comes along that just launches you. And you're like, holy shit. And for me, it was Howard Stern. Howard was like the right. big, I mean, there was a couple things along the way. It was George Carlin. There was uh, before George was a guy named Bob Rivers, who's a radio dude in Seattle. Seattle yeah. And um, uh, and then before that is a guy who's coming tonight from Tucson named DC Collins, who told me I should be a comedian. And and so it's it's been um, a series of things of like lucky things that have happened that have launched everything. Yeah. So, so was the stand up before the, the radio, or was radio then stand up? Same time. Okay. I started said, doing yeah. radio at the same time. That I started okay. doing stand up. Yeah. I, s- I heard something you said that. Um, you did stand up, and then like all the comedians were kind of giving you shit, and they said that you were terrible. So then you kind of like took your revenge, and you just like worked at it and worked at it. And you came back like three years later. And just Here's what ass. happened: I ate my dick, which is what every comedian does when they start, right? Yeah, but it was bad. I went to an open mic in Tucson at Laughs Comedy Club. I was 20 years old. I wasn't even old enough to be in the club, and I went up on stage. I didn't know that comedians plan material. <laughs> Because it looks like yeah. people get up and go, how you doing? Hey, right. and they start telling stories. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I could do that. And I went up on stage with no material. And I just stood there. Lights are on me. I didn't realize how bright the lights were, how loud the microphone was. And the whole crowd's just staring at me. And I just, oh, man. I just, I froze. And I just said, I can't do this. And I mm-hmm. walked off stage. Wow. And that wasn't the bad part. Oh. The bad part was every guy who came up after me shit on me. And it wasn't even, like, funny shitting on me. It was like people were getting up and just going, man, how about that guy, last guy? Who, man, that guy sucked. What are you doing here? And, the, and it was fucking terrible. At an open mic? At an open mic, Jeez, yeah. I thought that would be a little more forgiving. I mean, it's yeah. like half the people kind of suck, basically, yeah. right? It was bad. We got to – do you guys mind if we um, talk – uh, I just know there's space around here. Yeah, this is picking up all the noise. Sorry about that. Um, I feel bad now. I'm, I'm sitting here with other comedians, and no, I'm asking no. other comedians to like keep it down so we can f- do the podcast. I know, I'm, I'm just sorry. glad you're doing it. I'm really uh, <clears throat> grateful for that. But so yeah, so then you talked about talking about the, going back to the cocaine. Uh, you had that cocaine have, but then. <laughs> So, By the way, if any of the other comics <laughs> want to chime in on cocaine, please feel free. I mean, it's. Uh, I've never done it it's myself, open forum. but it's so, amazing. Yeah, but you had a heart attack at age 32. <laughs> I and had so a heart then attack. you're like, I'm done. That was the thing that kind of made Well, the heart attack scared me straight. Yeah. And then, Rightfully um, so. And then I got in a really bad relationship with a girl that made me go backwards. And uh, I ended up relapsing um, for most of oh. 2004. And then on the two-year anniversary of my heart attack, a light came on. And it was just like, what am I doing? I was starting to take care of my mom. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't physically take care of her, but I've been paying her bills. I've been sending her money every month. Right. And um, I was circling around opportunities where I literally could take care of my mom for the rest of her life. Mm-hmm. And it just hit me like, w- this feels really selfish. Right. I had a heart attack two years ago today. Why am I doing this? And I had half a beer in my hand, and I just threw the beer out, and then I just never drank or did anything since. So, wow. And uh, I got really lucky because in the first year that I got clean, seven of my friends died. Right. All comedians. Yeah. Four drug overdoses, three drinking and driving car accidents. The first was my f- uh, my old roommate in New York, Mitch Hedberg. Right. And Mitch... Yeah. Um, my favorite comedians. Mitch uh, was making $50,000 a night at the time doing stand-up. Jeez. And he loved decadence. And uh, loved... Um, Loved the lifestyle. Yeah, he, the dr- loved, he had a lot of jokes about drugs. Yeah, man, he loved rock and roll. Like, I took him to a concert once, and he made a whole bit out of it. Um, uh, we went, I took him to go see a Rob Zombie concert, and the opening act was Monster Magnet, and he had a whole oh, joke yeah, yeah. about Monster Magnet. I and love I, that joke. Someone just sent me, like, two weeks ago, and I, I was, I've been looking for this for 15 years. Somebody sent me the clip of Mitch talking about me on Letterman. I was with him upstairs in the green room, And Mitch started to tell that joke for the first time. And he said, I went to a heavy metal concert with my friend, Craig Gass. And the whole Letterman Studio audience went, who? (laughs) Like the whole 
<laughs> and it made him laugh. And yeah. he goes, ha ha, hell yeah. And it's like, nobody knows who the fuck right. my friend Chris is. That's awesome. And someone though. finally gave you a shout out. Me, it's on my Instagram now. Yeah. That video is on my Instagram. But uh, yeah, but it was sad. And um, uh, but every one of my friends who died, sadly, was a reminder that I could never turn around and, and go back to go the way I was living way, yeah. because um, I, I wouldn't be able to survive it. Right, yeah. Did you have any other residual effects of that, all those years of cocaine use besides, the, like, are you have to be careful now with, like, your heart attack? Like, do they check your heart once a year or something? Um, yeah, I, uh, I've i done stress tests, and they say that nothing, it's really weird. Like, my, my health is really good, which it makes yeah. no sense. <laughs> uh, it really doesn't. Oh. Like, uh, like, um, uh, blood work, everything is fine. Blood pressure, it's insane that there's no serious damage that happened. I had pericarditis of the heart, which is the inflammation of the sac of the heart that uh, I felt the residual effects for a while afterwards. But but now it's I, I I'm doing okay. I know that if I ever went back. Yeah. By the way, this would be a great thing to play back when I'm dead. If I ever <laughs> went back, I'll die immediately. Yeah, that's so. crazy. Well, I just saw today that uh, James Hetfield is going back to rehab. That's kind of surprising. That bummed me out because yeah. James... Um, you opened for them. Yeah, and James uh, James is one of the guys that early on... Actually, the night that I relapsed after my heart attack, Yeah. after being scared straight for a year and two weeks, I relapsed at one of his shows... And I walked up to him and said, uh, "Hey, man, I just uh, <clears throat> I just relapsed tonight with one of your friends, and uh, and I and he gave me some advice that night that uh, was really nice, but I wasn't ready to hear. I just I just kept uh, free falling for the rest of 2004. But they were playing a New Year's Eve show in Las Vegas uh, at the Hard Rock, and uh, um, uh, <laughs> I got yeah, I, I I fucked my whole life up that night, and I bought a T-shirt." Uh, from the concert, and every year when I get another year of sobriety, I put the T-shirt on. I wear that T-shirt every year on on the day of uh, on getting another year clean. So nice. So you don't really have as much temptation. It's been so long now, right? And you have to really want it. It's yeah. really crazy how many people I've been around. Uh, women that I was dating, friends, and we would be doing drugs and drinking to a level where we knew, like, man, this is bad. Like, this really is bad, but we would not stop. And, you know, the signs were always there. There's always people who will die around you. There's always people who uh, uh, become a victim of it. And and you see it, but you keep going. And um, I've heard people in Seattle, musician friends of mine, say that about when Kurt Cobain died, when Lane Staley died. There were people going, man, it's really terrible. And they kept doing heroin, even though, like, people were dying. Yeah. Yeah. So Because so um, the list is so long. I mean, it was after Kurt Cobain, then Lane Staley, and it's like, it was just the list. It wasn't the drummer of Alice in Chains, too? Or uh, it was the bass player, Mike Starr. Player. My, that's what it was. Yeah, Star, Mike yeah. Starr was, um, uh, yeah. And it's, it's really, strong. it's crazy. Um, and people are more mature about what that means. Growing up, it was always like, rehab's for quitters, you pussy. <laughs> pussy, yeah. you know? And right. now people are more mature about what recovery means. And, um, and if you know you have an issue, if you know you have a problem... Is that the Brussels sprouts? That's me. Um, love Brussels sprouts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's how you stay healthy. Yeah. Brussels sprouts are good for you. Yeah. That's what they say, man. I yeah. just think they're delicious. Yeah. I just started trying Brussels sprouts literally. With steak, too. That looks uh, good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, it's one of those things where if this uh, conversation about uh, addiction really strikes a chord with you if you feel like, wow, this is something maybe I should look into. If you feel like there's something wrong and the way you're living, it, you know is something that's that's gotten out of control, right. you have to love yourself enough to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And you uh, and you need to go get help if you need it. But, yeah, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't strike a chord with everybody. But No, yeah, true. Some people can do it just to have a couple of drinks or whatever. But so you have so many famous <laughs> friends and uh, like, do you have any non famous friends? Tons. Like, or, oh, do you? Okay. Oh man. I got tons of friends who, uh, who uh, are broke. And uh, <laughs> I was just talking on the air and I was like, Oh, should I even say this? But I was on the air with my buddy Holmberg this week. And um, yeah, I got a story about him actually. and telling the story about my friend who um, 
I started to say, uh, hey, man, let me ask you a question. And we were off the air. I said, what would you think if your friend told you this? And he said, you want to say it on the air? And I said, no. And he said, you sure? And I said, all right, fuck it. And he goes, well, that was easy. And he yeah. goes, all right. He goes, all right, so tell me about your friend. I go, all right, I don't want to say any names. But what would you say if you had a friend who told you he was hooking up with a girl that he was not physically attracted to, and then he moved in with her, and she was paying all of his bills? What would you think of that person? And somebody in the room, Eric, who's one of the co-hosts on the show, said, uh, boy, don't they uh, say that who you keep your company with is a reflection of who you are? And I said, well, dude, I have all kinds of friends. Yeah. I have friends who are successful. I have friends who are not successful. But, and I, I posed that question. Um, but most of my closest uh, inner circle is people who I grew up with um, who uh, all have, you know, healthy lives that are just regular, normal lives. And along the way, I've met a lot of people who, and this is the coolest thing about what I've been pursuing for the last 26 years, which is essentially just a dream to want to do something that you have a love for. Mm -hmm. I have met and made friends with so many people who chase their dream. And it's not just being a, a musician or being a comedian. I've met people who love music so much that they just want to be on the road doing something. And they found a passion for lighting or they found a passion for sound. They found a passion for whatever that keeps them close to this thing that they love. Same right. thing in comedy. I know people who became agents uh, who opened up comedy clubs because they love comedy. Yeah. And I've made so many friends who are succeeding to varying degrees uh -huh. Um and, uh, you know, and but just still going after it is the most important thing. Yeah. Even and that's the same with me. It's like the podcast. I'm like, I don't have any musical talent. I can't act. I'm not funny. So it's like I could, but I can interview people. So that's literally it's how cool. I got into comedy. I wanted yeah. to be in the music business. And I was like, but I don't have any talent. <laughs> and I would book and promote concerts yeah. here in Arizona for local bands from the time I was 15 until I was 23, and it became more and more obvious that I wanted to be on stage because I insisted on introducing all the uh, bands that I managed. Yeah, that makes and my, sense. And my introduction started to get really long and uh, really obnoxious. Well, and you've always done the impression, so that's kind of a natural yeah. transition. Then. Yeah. So, hey, can you... I don't think you've ever talked about this on a podcast, but you got to tell me the story about that Facebook troll who said that he was, like, funnier than you, and he challenged you, and you offered to pay for his plane ticket to fly down and do stand-up. I saved all the screenshots. It's one of my proudest moments <laughs> in my life. <laughs> Whenever somebody shows up on my social media page to leave um, some kind of a troll comment, yeah. I am more than happy to engage. <laughs> and just, start, and okay. just start asking questions. Like, hey, yeah. man, let me ask you a question. And um, this guy wrote um, some shitty comment that was not even a post that was intended to be funny. Huh. Somebody left a comment like, yawn, that wasn't funny. And I replied and said, oh my God, I, I wasn't even trying to be funny, but man, I didn't realize that you are an expert <laughs> in, uh, please, uh, I'm going to create a new post. Follow me over there and, and please teach me because I absolutely want to be better. <laughs> And if you know what is good and not good, then by all means, and they made a whole new thread, and I said, hey, everybody, check out Fuckface Fred from the last post, who's such an expert on stand-up comedy that he's going to teach all of us how to be funny. Fred, this is your thread. So jump in and show me how it's done, and you, dude. you, like, tagged him in it, or he dude, came Oh, in. yeah, okay. and there's hundreds of comments from people oh. going, yeah, you piece of shit, what's up, Fred? You stupid fuck. And <laughs> what's interesting is I've been doing uh, that for years. Yeah. What was different about Fred is he went Donald Trump on me and actually doubled down. Oh, yeah. And said, I could, you know what? I'm a successful businessman, but if I wanted to, i Bet I could put together a funnier act than you in a month. And I said, hey, no problem. I'll tell you what. I'm going to book a show. About 20 minutes later, I booked one. And I said, all right, I'm doing a show in Hollywood at the Comedy Store right. in one month. And I'm paying for your plane ticket. And I'm going to fly you out. 
and you will get on stage for the first time ever at the Comedy Store in Hollywood. I'm going to put you on stage, and we will have you do 10 minutes of stand-up comedy, whatever you think would be killer, and then I want you to write five or 10 insults about me because I'm going to do the same to you. <laughs> so come up on stage, yeah. and then Sam Kinison's brother... Bill Kinnison chimed in and said, Craig, I'll judge. And I said, Ooh. we have a judge. <laughs> we have a judge. That's and fair. there was hundreds of comments. And the guy was not only continuing to insult me, he started insulting anyone who would talk shit to him and say, dude, you're in way over your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd look I watched this thread. It was he'd funny. watch their Facebook page and go, oh, aren't you a little too old to be playing a rock star? Aren't you a little... Like, he just started insulting everybody. Everybody hated the guy. And it just kept building... And then I sent him a private message and I said, hey, just send me your birth date so I can get you a plane ticket. I'm going to buy you. And I bought him plane tickets and, and he started to say, you know, how much you paying me for this? And I go, just, I go not only are you not going to get paid, I'm not going to get paid. All the money we make from the ticket sales, 100% of the profits, we're going to donate to a local charity that helps people who are mentally ill like you. <laughs> and we're going to help yeah. people just like you to get some help that they need. But you're coming out, yeah. and I'm not going to get paid, and you're not going to get paid. But I'm paying for your travel. I'm flying you to Hollywood. Yeah. And um, the day before the show, he, uh, he, post, out, right? he posted a thing saying, uh, unfortunately, I have to um, – I can't get anybody to cover for me. Come to find out, right. um, he owns a flower shop in Queens. And uh, I went through his Facebook page to write material about him, and I laughed – to myself for an hour <laughs> scrolling through all his posts. It was so joyous. I mean, uh, listen, I don't like folk music. Yeah. But I wouldn't go to Bob Dylan's Facebook page and go, you suck dick, Bob. I right. don't, your music sucks. Exactly. And you're a piece of shit. Like I wouldn't, it's just not my thing. But yeah. I wouldn't go to Bob Dylan's Facebook page and say, hey man, you're a piece of shit. But this guy really went out of his way to say, and then he made a post where he said, all right, I wasn't able to make it, you know, but I'll reimburse you for the flight, which he still hasn't. But uh, if you would have had the balls to do it in my backyard of New York That's City, right. I would have been happy to show up there. And I said, no problem. Then my next show's yeah. in New York. And I booked another show in New York City, and he still didn't show up. And uh, so I that raised, was the end of it then, right? That, uh, was, that was the end of it, oh. and uh, he blocked me. Oh. And um, he has a niece who's... Con Continually checking in with me to say, you know, I'm really sorry about my uncle, but this is what's going on with him now, and nobody likes him, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so, yeah, no shit. Obviously, really crazy. That's an awesome story. So let's talk about the Seahawks a little bit. I know that you you have a Matt Hasselbeck story. You have uh, you've, you have all the you have tons of stories with the Seahawks. Is there anything that stands out that you want to? Because I know there's a lot of Seahawks fans that I'm friends with that would probably be interested in hearing that. Just that I love them. I'm sorry, I just ate some Brussels sprouts. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> That I love the Seahawks, and the Seahawks could be 0 and 8, and I'm that guy that's like, hold on! <laughs> we still got this, all right? right? But first of all, we can't lose any more games. Yeah. Like, that's it. Yeah. No more losing. We got to win eight in a row, and we need the uh, 49ers, and we need the Rams to get in a bus crash, and we right. got this. Like, I've, I've got a whole, like, chart yeah. with, like, I've got it all mapped out. That was, out. like, in the 80s and 90s, but now it's like they're, they usually have a chance, it seems like. They're a lot better this, year, this last few years. The last few years have been amazing. Yeah. And, um, but the way the Seahawks play on Sunday genuinely affects my mood for That's, the next yeah, seven days. Yeah, I heard you say that. So yeah, I was um, at the game on this last night. That was a rough one, but we almost pulled it out. yeah. That bummed me out. You were at the game yeah. against the Saints? Yeah, and then I'm going this week, too. And you are, too, of course. Yes, yeah. I'll be there yeah. on Sunday. Awesome. So let's go talk about the music, too, because you actually, you and I actually like the same music. You started out, like, in Quiet Riot and Motley Crue, Rat, and then now you're, like, a big Pearl Jam. You like all the Seattle bands. You're friends with Mike McCready. But you actually opened for, like I said, Metallica and uh, Motley Crue and stuff. Mm -hmm. So tell me the story about uh, Lars Ulrich and how, like, you pranked him on Stern, and then that's how you guys became friends. Well, it led to... Um, um, I was doing a radio show with a buddy of mine in um, St. Louis. There's this guy, Woody, who uh, um, said that when I get to St. Louis that I could join his show anytime I want and just hang out all week. And when I got there, he had Lars Ulrich on the phone from Lars's house in San Francisco. 
And he thought it'd be funny to plug me into this conversation by saying, hey, Lars, you're not going to believe this, but Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons are in the studio and they want to talk to you. And Lars is like, is that really Paul Stanley and Gene <laughs> Simmons there? It is, guys. Say hi. Hey, Lars, this is Paul Stanley. <laughs> and this is Gene Simmons from KISS. <laughs> And I'm going to get right to the point, Lars. A lot of people steal from Kiss. You know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. But on the new Metallica record, I think you've gone a little too far. And I'll give you a perfect example. Name one song on the new Metallica record that you think is completely original. And Lars goes, I think all the songs are <laughs> pretty original. Right. But if you had to pick one song. If I had to pick what song it would probably be, and he gave me a song title, and I said, that's a great song, Lars. But I liked it a lot better the first time I heard it when it was called Beth. And he went, how do you hear Beth in the middle of Metallica? It doesn't make any fucking sense. And he started arguing with a fake Paul Stanley and a fake Gene Simmons. And then my buddy st started throwing in more celebrities. Like, hey, guess who else is here? Christopher Walken is here. Hi, Lars. I love Metallica because <laughs> I love cocaine. And he started talking to all oh. the celebrities until my friend finally said, hey, Lars, you're not going to believe it. Sam Kinison's here. And I go, hey, Lars, this is Sam Kinison. <laughs> and I don't know if you remember this, but you and I used to do a lot of coke back in the 80s. <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> oh! And Lars goes, oh, God. didn't that guy die like 20 <laughs> years ago? I was like, yeah, it's really weird. And then... Uh, and then my buddy finally revealed, hey, man, it's actually, yeah, we've been just busting your chops. This is a comedian named Craig Gass. And I said, Lars, I'm sorry. I hope you have a good sense of humor. And he said, man, that was great. So you are you going to be in St. Louis when we get there to perform? And I said, uh, no, I live in New York, so I will not be here when you come here. And he said, well, the next time you come to Metallica show, I'd love to hang out with you. And I was like, Crazy. I'd love to hang out with you too. Yeah. I was super stoked about that. And then um, when I got back to New York, I was working on the Howard Stern show at the time, and our producer, Gary DeLabate, ran up to me like a week later and said, hey, uh, you're not going to believe this. I just got off the phone <laughs> with uh, somebody from, from uh, Metallica's record label, from Electro Records, and apparently one of the guys in Metallica is trying to get in touch with you, man. You're going to fucking call this guy. It's fucking funny, man. And apparently, Lars had tracked me down to buy me a plane ticket to fly me to uh, Denver to do a promotion with him. And then I ended up uh, doing a radio show with Lars, sight unseen. And we ended up hanging out that night. And then he brought me out to, <laughs> to the Metallica concert the next night. They played in a football stadium where the Broncos play. Right. And he introduced me to his Crazy. band. And it was insane. Yeah. yeah. He, um, uh, when he walked me in, it was three other members of Metallica sitting at a table and a security guy. And Lars walked me in and said... This is the guy who does the fucking impressions. <laughs> Do some impressions for my friends, huh? And I'm doing impressions for four people in Metallica and a security guy. Crazy. And then um, at one point, his singer said, "How do you um, how do you learn how to do that? Like, how do you do you like work on the impressions?" Or and I said, "No, nah, it's I don't know if Lars told you, but I grew up in a really unusual circumstance." And Lars goes. Dude, his whole family's retarded. I go, they're not retarded. They're deaf. What the fuck? His whole family's retarded. They're a bunch of retards. They couldn't learn how to talk. And I'm like, no, you're, you're fucking my whole story, yeah, dude. Geez, it's not, the, they're, they're deaf, man. They're yeah. not retarded. But, but uh, yeah, so. so. And then you do a Sebastian Bach impersonate, which I, I was like, I think you got to be the only person that does a Sebastian Bach impression, right? We did a roast uh, of Corey Taylor um, from Slipknot, and the roast master was Sebastian Bach. And he, every time a joke was made about him, he couldn't. Not react. He just kept going, Psst. like I haven't heard that before. <laughs> Hello. And he is just, he's like a big kid. He's yeah. a really likable guy, yeah. man. I mean, he is sincerely huge rock fan. No, definitely. He, yeah. he finally invited me. He, he's always like texting me to hang out. And there was one point where I actually was home and it was his 50th birthday and he had a birthday party and I went to his house and his, his whole house is is just covered in really respectable um, music collections of oh, yeah. all kinds. And yeah, he it's, posts a lot of that stuff. Like, he has a lot of collect memorabilia. Yeah, he's stuff. amazing. He's amazing. Crazy. Are we okay on time? or? I think, what time is it? 10 till. So I don't know if 10 till? Let's do another 10 minutes. Okay, cool. Um, so then you got to tell me the uh, Gene Simmons. I know you've told this story before. The Gene Simmons, uh, or the, the Kiss Cruise story, I guess, is what it would be called. Well. that's my, I laughed so hard the first time I heard this. There was, um, 
a crazy thing that happened where I started doing an impression of Gene Simmons on the Howard Stern show. And we didn't know at the time that the real Gene Simmons started getting hate mail because of all the awful shit that I was saying on the Howard Stern show. Right. And Gene Simmons got on a plane and flew to New York to confront me live on the air. And then um, um, I started developing this relationship with the band and their management and their crew. And then I got asked to perform on the Kiss Cruise. And that is when I got to the peak of being friends with the band and then I lost all the fans because <laughs> I did something on the cruise that was a joke that was taken very seriously by right. a handful of people. Oops. I met a girl on the cruise who was the cruise director and she said, oh my God, you're the comedian. You're the guy that does the voices, the family guy and king of queens and oh my God, do you want to do you want to do a funny announcement on the ship tomorrow morning? And I was like, oh, <laughs> fuck Yes. Is everybody going to hear it? And she goes, oh, it gets piped into every cabin. And the next morning, 3,000 KISS fans at sea woke up to bing bong. Hey, everybody. This is Paul Stanley. And this is Gene Simmons <laughs> from KISS. <laughs> and we have a very important announcement. Do not panic. But we have a very important announcement about the KISS crews. It seems that the KISS cruise has just hit an iceberg. Now, keep in mind, when I said we've hit an iceberg, we're in the middle of the fucking Bahamas. Right. There's, there's no, no icebergs. There's no reason for you as an intelligent person to go, this ship's going down. Yeah. We're in the fucking Bahamas. But do not panic because KISS <laughs> is going to take care of everybody. We actually have three packages to get you off the ship. First, we have the platinum package. It's $5,000. <laughs> We'll put you in a life raft, and you have your own private photos taken with KISS. Then we have the diamond package. Isn't that right, Paul? That's right, the diamond package. For $10,000, where we throw you in the ocean with Tommy and Eric, and then KISS floats by on a raft, and we do a private <laughs> acoustic show. Everything I said was stupid. But apparently, oh. two or three of the passengers on the ship actually ran to the employees and said, is Kiss really going to charge us to get off the boat? <laughs> and they really thought that, that shit was going down yeah. and, that, uh, and that Kiss was standing at the exits waiting for everybody to get out their credit cards. But, yeah, it's, it's pretty weird. There's been a, a lot of weird moments along the way like that. But uh, I'm, what was cool about it is Kiss had a great sense of humor about it. Too. That's cool. Yeah, That's so you're still friends it. with them. They're so cool about it. Yeah, they still yeah. let me go to shows. Okay. And then I'll go to shows and <clears throat> Gene will... Um, like, I'll, you know, they'll give me passes where I can go anywhere I want. Yeah. And I'll see Gene walking out in his costume, and I'll go, go uh, have fun, buddy. You know, and I, I just kind of walk away from him. I'm scared of him. Right. And then, he'll, and then I'll, as I'm walking towards the stage, there'll always be, like, employees. who are like, Craig, Gene's trying to get a hold of you. Craig, look, Gene wants you. And I'll turn around, and Gene will be standing next to some people, and he'll say, come here. Come here. And I'll go, oh, what's going on? He's like, these are my friends. I want you to entertain them. Go. And I go, oh, okay. Hey, what's going on, guys? He goes, no. Impressions. Come on. Impressions. Let's go. Oh, all right. Uh, what do you guys like? Do you guys like uh, Al Pacino or Tracy Morgan? And then I'll start doing impressions for them. And then I remember one night, uh, one of his friends said, wow, how'd, how'd you learn how to do that? And I said, oh, it's, I grew up in a family that's deaf. I don't know if Gene's owned you. And they're like, really? Is that true? And Gene Simmons goes, it's true. His family's deaf and he's dumb. And I went, what the fuck? <laughs> Why are you like I'm here entertaining your friends? Yeah. Why are you going to do this to me? But yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. But it, it's turned into uh, a really nice friendship. His son Nick comes to the comedy store oh and, uh, pretty regularly, and he says that uh, he's been telling me like, dude, when you showed up doing that impression of my dad, like it was right when my dad started to get a sense of humor about himself. Like if you would have shown up even. Five years earlier, my dad would have murdered you. Right. But he had just started to develop a sense of humor about himself, so he, you, you showed up at the right time, so I got lucky. That's cool. So you have, you've seen a lot of shows. You do, you do all these sporting events. Do you ever just have, like, a quiet night at home, Netflix? or like? Every night after a show. Oh, really? When okay. I get done here, I'll be, we'll do a comedy show, have some laughs, hang out with friends, back in my hotel, glass of chocolate milk, ESPN. Nice. Yep. Analyzing... How many games in a row the Seahawks need to get to to have home field advantage to make it all the way to the Super Bowl? Yeah, well, we still got a lot 
Well, and how many this how many teams in the American League West have to die in the next <laughs> few days for the Mariners to get in the playoffs? Yeah, I think that season's shot for them, but uh, yeah, it's always shot in April. So I've never heard you do like all your impressions in a row. Yep. Can we can we try? I I, I tried to look for like a reel. You don't have like a reel of no. Nah, people just put random shit on online <clears throat> and and um, uh, people post all this stuff together. I've never really tried to do them all in a row. I, I um. Do you want to try that right now since we have like five minutes? I'll, I'll do, here's what I'll do. I'll tell you like the fun process of doing it because okay. um, I think it's funnier to explain how I'll call friends yeah. and try out my impressions on them. And because um, they know the impressions that, I've, that I can do, but they don't know the impressions that, <laughs> like I'll get a homework assignment from Family Guy or from Disney and I'll go, hey, tell me if this sounds right. And my friends will be really critical. Then I'll get defensive. And I'll say, like, well, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'll, I'll get super defensive. Like, my friends will listen and go, that doesn't sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I'll go, dude, that's, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger after a bad car accident. So <laughs> that way I can get away with, Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's Arnold Schwarzenegger after a bad car accident. So with that in mind, I know I can't do a Mark Wahlberg impression. But what I can do is something I call out of breath Mark Wahlberg, which already lowers your expectations. And it's just simply being out of breath and going, guys, are you serious? Come on, man. You got to help me out. There was a car accident out front. You got to... Arnold Schwarzenegger just got in bad car accident. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You gotta help me get some bodies out. Yeah, yeah. Come on, feel it, feel it, feel the vibration. Yeah. yeah so. Does he get? He, I heard he gets mad if you call him Marky Mark, but I, I always every I always accidentally call him Marky Mark every time. I don't know how sensitive it is. <laughs> I've never run into him, so I don't oh, know. That's but. one person that you have. Is there other people that you haven't met that you're that are on your bucket list to like hang out with or? Mm -mm. No. I um. I continually get introduced to people who I respect and admire, but um, there's no one person that... I mean, there's people that I... This, this might sound really silly, but there's people that I'll see that I'll go, man, I can't wait to be friends with that dude. I, I just know that guy and I are going to click. Yeah. And I, I thought the same thing about Howard Stern. Um, I just knew I was going to work with him someday. Yeah. And I sent him a tape, and they called me the next day. Um, wow. I... Um, What's he like? I mean, he's kind of a, he always talks about it on air. He's kind of more of a recluse and kind of a shut in and doesn't like to go out. Did you ever get to like hang out with him and the, the Stern staff when you worked there? Or? Yeah, he's, he's an introvert. Um, there was a couple times when the guys would all get together for card games at somebody's mm -hmm. place, like at Doug's house, you know, Doug Goodstein or, um, but uh, I hung out with all the different guys that work on the show and, and a lot of them at concerts. Um, like Richard, I would definitely hang out with it at metal shows oh, and stuff. Course. That makes sense. Um, I never hung out with Robin outside. And Robin, I saw Fred a couple times doing his uh, King Norris band. And um, Howard, a couple of times. The first time I ever did Howard's show, he came out to see me at a comedy club that night. Um, wow. Yeah, and the place was packed. And it was crazy because... People started chanting his name when he walked oh. in. It was fucking nuts. Oh, he didn't wear a disguise or something? Or? It's, he, he said this all the time. He is impossible to disguise. He's <laughs> six foot six. Uh, true. Six foot four, whatever. Yeah. And he's just, he's very hard to disguise. You just, you know from his frame, like, holy shit, that's Howard Stern. So, yeah. And um, when you're asking me to do, like, all my impressions in a row, I just thought, like, man, I don't even know all the impressions I do. So, um, I so think I you did be, most of them. You didn't do Gilbert Godfrey or Tom Arnold or Adam Sandler. Or Tom Arnold is very simple. You just I love it. It's, you just got to do some coke. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole impression. You know, it's uh, it's great, and uh, I like fat women and cocaine. And uh, but yeah, it's uh, uh, I don't think of them all like uh, like racing through all of them. I just uh, I love hearing stories about one guy and just kind of ex exploring that one personality. It's just yeah, kind of yeah. funny to me, but. Uh, um, How come they didn't have you on the uh, Alec Baldwin roast? You do a perfect Alec Baldwin. I uh, I told Jeff uh, I worked with Jeff two weeks before. Me and Jeff and David Tell did. A, I saw that picture. Yeah, a He's couple like of shows. Um, Jeff is uh, Jeff and Dave have always been really nice to me, but yeah. I didn't start out with Jeff and Dave. They're not okay. part of my clique, but we always see each other. We oh. always run into each other. Random places too. Like I um, I. I ran into Jeff backstage at a Josh Groban show. I was asked to go out and get Jeff and give him a laminate so he can come back and talk to, to Josh Groban. And uh, so it's like random spots that a tell I will only see at a comedy club. Um, I don't think I've ever seen him outside of a comedy club. Although okay. we did hang out a lot when we did those bump and mic shows together. So 
Um, but uh, but there are comedians. It's not uncommon to hang out with a comedian friend of yours in New York on a Tuesday night and then run into them again in L.A. on Wednesday night and hang out. And it's, huh. it's you know, because we're always bouncing back and forth between L.A. and New York. So yeah, not uncommon. But um, because Alec Baldwin, didn't didn't he call you? Or he's got your number or something, right? Doesn't he call you? But you say I you don't answer the... Uh, oh, you have his number now. Yeah. Well, I've had his number you, ever since we worked together I thought on it was that. something like you don't answer. If it says blocked call, you won't answer it because it like, makes you too nervous. Cause it I won't be- answer if, if it's a blocked call because that's either a really famous person or it's a old Coke dealer that I used to hang out with. And I don't want to talk to either of them because that puts me on the spot makes me feel nervous but um but yeah alec um we worked together on that show las vegas and it's weird there's a lot of phone numbers that i have on my phone where i just scroll through and i go i don't want to bother that guy and i just don't want to bug the guy but um but yeah man i'm uh, i'm glad i got a chance to talk to you i was excited to to when you hit me up i just yeah. i lo- i looked at your picture and it was just wearing a seahawks thing and i was like i remember meeting that guy because we met in downtown phoenix yeah. Super Bowl weekend. and i recognized you yeah. and you're like oh you made me feel like a like a celebrity i was like you yeah. are a celebrity <laughs> so it's cool yeah. dude you're i like will, really nice anybody who talks to me and i i have a lot of friends who will go out of their way to not get recognized by people if i get recognized by somebody i have talked to people until they get to the point where they go all right we have to leave. And I go, well, dude, want to fucking hang out? Come on, man. Yeah. I did it in my apartment building in Los Angeles. Some guy was walking down the hall, and he goes, Craig Gass, what are you doing here? And I go, I fucking live here, dude. What's up? And the girl I was living with at the time, I threw the door, and I go, babe, get out of here. This guy knows who I am. And I tell him, I go, yeah, man, I live right here, in this apartment right here. And it wasn't until later, I was like, why did I do that? Like, I'm pointing and going, this place is empty 28 days a month, right there. <laughs> Lots of cool shit. Go on yeah. in, get whatever you want. Like, yeah. oh, that was bad. But, yeah, man. Thank you, man. We're going to okay, yeah. Guys, we're gonna do this. Let's get ready to start the show. So. Yeah, oh, just, yep, okay, thank you so much. Do we have any parting? Uh, 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 just, you know, you said your uh, charity that you're passionate about is the National Association for the Deaf. Um, obviously, check you out on social media. And um, your website is all your tour dates and everything. Right? Yep, getgas.com, getgas with two S's. And, um... Uh, and yeah, you can find all the links there. And yeah. thank you for uh, making time. Thank for you today. so much, dude. You're dude. like this is the, you're the biggest name I got on this podcast. That's, That's awesome. awesome. <laughs> well, cool. you got a lot thank of work you. to do. Get out there and get some bigger names, <laughs> I man. I will. I will. Thank you. All right. Thank all you. Right.